Hi folks, uh, Tim here again. It's Sunday early afternoon and I was looking for something to talk about today on the channel here. Lo and behold, a friend of mine asked me about can somebody steal your IP address? Not really. Uh, IP addresses are kind of fluid. They move around. But from conversing with her, I realized well, she didn't really know what IP addresses were and how they worked. You actually have three addresses. Uh, for the sake of this video, all we're talking about are cell phones. It applies to your tablet. It applies to your desktop, whether it's plugged into the router at home or not. They all work the same. But some of the examples I give are going to be about cell phones, just so we can kind of clarify things. So, there are three addresses, and get ready for the great audiovisual aid. Yes, there it is. You have a MAC address. That is the address of your device, whether it be your modem from the phone company that connects out to the world because you're not anywhere near Wi-Fi or when you walk in the house oh it instantly goes oh we got our own IP address and it switches over to Wi-Fi that's your internal Wi-Fi address LAN and then your router itself as the external or WAN wide area network IP kind of the same as the IP you had when you were outside using your phone except probably on a different network so three addresses two are IP addresses one is the MAC address one is the device the other the other two, I think I just swallowed a fly. Uh, the other two are your connection to your Wi-Fi router. Like I said, for the sake of this, we're using our cell phone. We're not plugged in. It works the same with the plug-in. Doesn't matter. Bottom line is, nobody can steal your IP. There are just different kinds of IP. There are static. There are least, also known as DHCP, dynamic host protocol, which your router will assign to your device based on its MAC address. So let's get right to it, and I'll try to keep it as low level as possible. Those are the only three things you need to know, really. And if you're a tech guy, please don't leave a bunch of comments saying you left this out and you left that out. It's not a college course and we're not trying to teach rocket science to folks in 15 minutes. We're trying to teach what the hell's an IP and how do I get one and how does it get here. With that, we're going to cue the intro right over there. All right, folks, so I figured I'd give you another look at my little description here, the MAC address. Excuse my type in the MAC, it should probably be in capital letters. Every device, such as a cell phone modem, your home Wi-Fi router, and your Wi-Fi chip in your phone or tablet has a unique MAC address. Uh, I think this is your home address. That's your actual where it's going to that Wi-Fi chip or to your cable modem or to your router itself every one of them gets a different address every little piece is part Let's take for example 
I have the uh, Zotac uh, Z or CI3123. I have two Ethernet ports in the back. Each one has a MAC address. I have a wireless uh, AC connection as a MAC address Wi Fi. I have the, oop, excuse me, the ability to plug in my uh, Comcast dual band Wi Fi AC adapter, which I really don't need in this other type, but let's say I did. Yeah, that'd be another MAC address. The router here, which has its own MAC address, my router, would see that as four different places to send stuff. It's all going to end up in the same place. Your computer will handle that when it gets there, but on the same token, your MAC address on your router, it's attached to your cable modem, which now knows your MAC address and internal IP and assigns an internal IP to it. Poof! Now you got an IP address. That's called DHCP, usually Dynamic Host Control Protocol, unless the cable company or fiber optic or whoever you're using has assigned you a static IP address. Unlikely. The static IP would be on the outside going out to the world. That's the that's the other one. Now, the internal IP address. This is what your cell phone provider or you know here. Remember I said this was gonna be kind of geared towards cell phones. If you're outside in your cell phone just using it, AT&T gives you an IP. It also knows your MAC address and that's how it's mind you. It's really using the MAC address. But the IP, those are grouped, you know, by location. 192, no, let's say 172.99.58.64. Who knows where that is? I don't know. I just made that one up, but it's, I guarantee somebody has that IP address. And we're only dealing with IP V4 here. The four octets. All right, so you hit up a server, let's say in Germany from New York City. Well, the German server that's gonna return your request, it sees which IP you came from, and it comes through a router and switches and all kinds of other stuff in between. We're not going into that you don't need to know about that it gets there and it says oh that has to go to new york city and it responds and it sends a web page to that ip now that ip goes to a switch in new york and the ip is your country code maybe even partially your city code it goes into some big giant switch think of a building with a Punch operators plugging stuff in a million times a second. And yeah, though they're like, oh, this goes over to, oh. say so you're using Comcast. It goes to Comcast. Comcast says, oh, wait a minute, that IP is assigned to this MAC address. It figures out where you're at and reroutes it to the correct switch or router in the area where you're at. Ah, now we're getting down like your zip code kind of thing. That's your external IP we're talking about right now. Now, it gets here. It just got to my cable modem. My cable modem just passes it on and says, well, everything that was requested goes to this one connection to my wireless router, which maybe you got a plug in one to plug in wireless like I do. You know, both, it doesn't matter. That goes to this MAC address, so it goes right there. And then your router takes over and says it to this guy. 
your internal IP. Now we're down to being at the post office and the postman is sending it to your address. Your home. It knows what your MAC address is. It has to. Because that's what they really work off of. Not your IP. At this point, the IP kind of meaningless. But no one can steal your IP. That was the point that got me going today. When my friend asked me, yeah, oh, somebody stole my IP. They can spoof your IP if you're in a public place. They can see everything you're seeing. Uh, maybe they're good hacking. But let's assume you can't steal an IP. On the other hand, uh, there are musical chairs with IPs because your router has its own setup, which we're going to look at all right now. This is my internal router at home. Now I'm not on cable yet, so I don't have a W. You got LAN. And you got one, when, when, the local area network, that is the IP of my router, 192.168.0.1. That's the MAC address of the router, on the LAN. That's where anything that's hooked to it, my cell phone, my Zotac, my tablets, guess where they go? They go there to send data and it sends what everything out to the cable modem and off it goes see how into the wild blue cyberspace yonder. there okay now you'll notice the wireless connection on uh, 11 802 11 BGN is uh, the same the land. Of course it is. It's all this. Uh, no, I don't work for the NSA. I just put the, I like to use that to make people nervous. Sometimes I put FBI surveillance van up. Uh, just if somebody's walking past it, like, oh, boy, and they look around for a man. Same with the five gate. Look. It's going. No, it's not. It's going to a different package. So, eh, kind of weird. Never noticed that before. But it's a different device. That's got its own device. And then the one. This is what the cable modem says. And of course, if I was hooked to the internet, I'd have an external. That'd be my external IP address, submit mask, gateway and DNS servers. It's all well and good. So let's move on. So, we're going to look right now, and the only thing hooked to my router is my Zotac. And I hope that that is the IP that I have on the PC right now. I also have the IP for the wireless, so I can set them at the same time. All right, but that's the name assigned. Now you'll notice it says, at least I'm permanent. Ooh, what does that mean? That means every time I to turn this on, I will get 192.168.0.3. Now picture this. Let's just say at home, you have four people in the family, and you decide to sit by whoever gets to which chair. It's dynamic host control. Everyone, you know, lost their lease when they, you know, left at lunch, not supper time. First one gets to sit for the mashed potatoes and gravy. Okay, and they get the next number, the next number. Uh, but dad says, no, I sit in chair number three always. Now that has to do with your DHCP. Now, the starting IP address is 192.168.0.2, and I set it all the way up to 199. You can make the 
which would give you a grand total of 254 addresses plus the router itself that's working. The least time for a non-reserved IP is two days. Now 120 would be two hours, so that's in minutes. Obviously, a better choice if you run a business so that when people leave their Apple phones IP or their Samsung or their Blue Studio, I don't care what they use, doesn't have that IP tied up for the next two days. He don't want to do that. Uh, at home, eh, not a big deal. That way every time you walk in the house, you'll probably get the same IP. But you may have a reason, like I used to, and I get cable back. I want, I'm not sure what this is, but this is Zotac. We know that already. It's enabled. This is reserved. That means I can go away for a year and come back and bring the Zotac home for its long trip to Africa into the deep wild jungles to check the internet of the real ones. I don't know why I'd be going for a year like that but, and take a desktop with me. Let's say I did. Guess what? I get that same IP back. Now if you're running a server and sending stuff by a port forwarding to you know what I'm saying? Port 80. Everything on port 80 and port 443, HTTPS and HTTP. Go to 192.168.0.3. Bingo! Every time you have a PC on, it's going to have and hold its, its IP. And that's pretty much how IPs work. MAC address is translated. This thing is the device inside the Zotac. Is the one you wanted to reserve. So, mm, ah, man, there's just a sign of humidity. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, folks, that's pretty much it. Oh, IP addresses. There really isn't anything else to know. You got a MAC address, which is the actual chip that that's being sent to. And in between you and whatever website, whether it be YouTube or wherever, it's going from Mac to Mac to Mac to Mac. And each of them has an IP. And it's just how it works. You don't have to. But no one can steal your IP address. Uh, if you uh, are worried about somebody stealing your IP, well, first off, you can you can set up your local network to allow, say, so you've got five devices in the house. Okay, find the MAC address of each one, which is easy to do when you go to your router. You'll see it in the client list when you turn it on. And just turn them on one time. Then you could go into your address reservation and say, okay, this one goes to dot two, this one goes to dot three, this one goes to dot four, this one goes to dot five, this one goes to dot six. And then you can go back in your main settings. Here, it's in DHCP. So you would change it. I don't know why that's not very neat now. This is your local stuff. And your router is assigned. So you'd set this from 192.168.0.2 because one is your router and the other one is six. And then it takes care of your five devices. Doesn't matter who walks in your house, they ain't getting a Wi Fi address. And if they plug into your router, they ain't getting an address. Sorry. So it's that simple. And that's all there is to it. Not a whole lot to know about IPs. But if you found this helpful at all, give us a thumbs up really helpful subscribe to our channel share the video 
Yeah, put it on Twitter, put it on YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram, and Facebook. I don't care where you share it. Share it. At least with people you know might find it advantageous to them. And uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you thought. Negative comments are just fine. I take them in stride. I won't get mad. I won't get angry. If you didn't like it, all right. If you did like it, I appreciate it. And that is it for today. Thank you.